Howdy, everyone, Pocha here in the dark with an Asian magic video. And in today's video, we're doing the hero spotlight for Omphus, the boss of the Guardians of Order, or as people now refer to them, the Goo faction. They are the Goo, he is the boss. We're going to go over his stats, his abilities, his animations, and talk a little bit about him and the faction he is going to lead, as now they are very close to being a complete faction and playable in the game with only... Siri and Sekman left to be released, but we can start testing these teams and figuring out what they are good against and go from there. So as his stats stand at completely maxed out, we have hit points just shy of 25 million, speed 250, armor 264k, magic damage resistance to uh, 464k, basic magic damage 2.8 million, magic critical hit chance is 50%, so not bad, not bad at all. And magic critical damage is 4.6 million. We go into his more in-depth stats here. Feel free to stop and have a look at it. Let me know. Does anyone actually look at these? Is this important to anyone? I'd love to know. I've always done it. I don't know why. But if if you do find this information useful, let me know. So, yeah, there we go. We'll jump into the arena now. We'll test out these guys. And, I mean, look at the animations. Beautiful. They've, done, they've outdone themselves with this faction. So, let's head over to the arena. Moving into the arena, we have Omphus's basic attack, Burst of Chaos, performs a magic attack on one target. If an attack deals damage to a target with a shield, the shield is removed, and all enemies receive damage equal to 75% of the attack. When awakened, increases his initiative by percent of the shield removed. It's a very interesting basic attack. We're going to go ahead and use it on the enemy Ramphit here. Just shoots a Bolt of energy across the field. Ramphus has some pretty good defense at the moment, so it doesn't do a huge amount of damage. Nice ability. Who are we getting the most effect out of this? There are two factions that I can think of that benefit from shields currently. I mean, they're not super meta, but they, they pop around every now and then. Is the Witches, if the Belladonna or your team resurrects the Belladonna and that shield, so you'd be able to bypass that. There is also the Van Norse with Grotto and his passive being able to apply shield every time Magic Absorb clicks. So this would be able to just remove a shield instantly and allow you to go straight for the HP. So not a horrible ability, not a horrible basic attack. Awakening, probably not relevant. I mean, it's a basic attack, so it's not going to be doing huge damage. So the initiative he gets is going to be quite minute. It's not going to be very noticeable, I don't believe. The low priority, unless you were really brimming with prisms and wanted to waste 200, I wouldn't, wouldn't concern yourself too much with this basic ability. Moving on to Omphus's second ability, we have Revenge of the Fallen. And what I love about this ability so far is there's just three lines of text. So beautiful, so beautiful. But what does it do? Performs a magic attack on all enemies, increases damage by 100% for every ally's canopic jar, receives a shield equal to 20% of maximum HP. When awakened, heals himself for 50% of the damage dealt. So it has a bit of self-sustain in him, could be very useful. We're going to go ahead and use the ability now and have a look at the beautiful animations. Like I said, they've gone all out with the animations for this faction. There we go, we get another attack there. And we get some shield, and again, we would restore some HP as well when awakened. So pretty standard ability, just does some AoE damage. The real damage is going to come from when your team starts to die, and those canopic jars are piling up on the field. So that's when he's going to start becoming a real threat. Moving on, we have Omphus's third ability, Discharge, performs a magic attack on one target, spends 50% of his maximum shield power to deal additional damage equal to that amount. If the shield power is lower than 50%, the entire shield is removed and turned into damage. If the target dies, 100% of spent shield HP is restored. When awakened, the ability cooldown is reduced to 6 turns. So quite a long ability cooldown. Um, I'm not sure how influential that will be in combat and whether it would be a priority to awaken, but it seems quite long. We're going to go ahead and attack the librarian here since he's probably the squishiest. We just want to see max damage. So we'll have a look at the animation. Summons a nice sphere of energy and boom. Yeah, so um so that's Omphus's third ability, and as you can see, the librarian and and that an apple a day keeps the doctor away is what I've always said. Um yeah, nice. 
yeah, just to know about the um the awakening. Everything else seems to check out uh, pretty pretty good there. <laughs> oh, stop it. Moving on to Omphis's leadership ability, we have Ancient Guardian. The damage of each allied hero is increased by the percent of their current shield from the maximum. Damage increase limit is 60%. Damage to ally shield is reduced by 40%. In Cradle of Chaos and Raids, the maximum HP of Omphis and allies is increased by 50%, and damage dealt by Omphis is increased by 25%. An allied Guardian cannot have their initiative reduced if they have a shield. Awakening this ability, if there is an allied Canopic Jar on the field, damage to allies is reduced by 60%. Every additional Canopic Jar reduces damage by another 10%. So, huge damage reduction that he can apply to his team the moment people start dying. This team gets stronger when there are more Canopic Jars on the field. So, it's a real hassle to deal with it all, but it's quite a, quite a decent leadership ability. Again, it's got similar similar traits to Rhiannon's leadership ability, but so far we've seen nothing come along that can just straight up reduce cooldowns per wave in Raid or Cradle of Chaos. So that's very interesting. Um, she still remains king king of the, or queen of the Raid tier characters. But yeah, the damage to allies shield is reduced by 40%. That's pretty big as well. This is a very, very tanky team. It's a team as well that relies so little on buffs. I said this in my last video. You can see the very few buffs are ever applied. Their strength is just inbuilt into them. There's no need to apply. There's no chance for the enemy to eliminate those buffs, eliminate their strengths. They are just born and bred strong heroes. So you just got to watch out for that. Finally, we have Omphis's passive. We have Beacon. When an ally misses with an attack or the target dodges, Omphis deals damage equal to 100% of his basic damage to that target. When Omphis dies, a Canopic Jar appears in his place. Omphis cannot be revived. He can only come back out of his Canopic Jar. When broken, every ally Canopic Jar has a 50% chance to bring back the hero with 40% HP. The effect can be triggered once per battle for each hero. All allied heroes start the battle with 40% shield. Awakening this ability, when Omphis kills an enemy, they cannot be revived. So, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty decent awakening. Now, mind you, when we used his third ability and we one-shot that librarian, keep in mind, that was purely manipulated. We had perfect circumstances. The enemy hadn't had any turns. They weren't able to apply buffs. They weren't able to increase defense. But by killing him with that ability, he's not going to be able to resurrect. So eliminating a lot of strength from characters like Eva, especially when you can just absolutely nuke the big threats, she's not going to bring them back. Like an Eva that can't bring back a librarian or can't bring back an Astoria is, um, is an Eva that's quite weakened. Her strength comes back from bringing the threats back to the field and then them absolutely annihilating you. So very, very strong awakening ability, but you've got to make sure you can kill targets. So even leaving a hero alive if you want to risk it so he can finish them off. Yeah, very, very interesting. So yeah, as a whole, we've seen them in battle before. I will do some videos of these heroes in actual meta fights where we have everything set up properly and we can play it properly won't be in this video i want to leave it for a different video but yeah he's a he's a strong leader he offers a lot his awakenings don't seem super important i think the most important one is probably his passive where he can just prevent resurrection but yeah like i said a lot of their strength is just inbuilt into them so they could be they are going to be a real threat i think to the meta scene when there are so many heroes that rely on their buffs and what they can offer and this team hasn't got that that worry of having that strength stripped from them they're, they're good to go and they will be good to go throughout the whole battle so very interesting but there you go that is Omphus the leader anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below i will answer it to the best of my ability and we'll be around the world until next time please take care of yourself